My name is Etim Maradonison, ex Super Eagles player. Uh, well, uh, the first performance against Poland was was encouraging, but the performance against Serbia wasn't that. There was no cohesiveness in the in the in, the, in Nigerian game at all. So against Serbia, we I think it's it's all about I mean preparing your your lads for the World Cup proper. So win or lose, at least we'll take something from the game. I think the coach might have seen one or two things that it will improve on the squad in this uh, Serbia game and the Poland game. So, by and large, other countries, other big nations lost. I mean, if you look at Germany's score result, they lost to Brazil. So, I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal when you lose in a... But when it comes to World Cup proper, that's when... I think the coach have learned one or two things. I mean, our left fullback wasn't that efficient. Our goalkeeper, there's no much really confidence in the goalkeeping. And our attack is not really biting. I think... Uh, the combination, we need a very creative midfielder to be, I mean, assisting Igalo in creating chances in the, in the game. Uh, we, we need to inject a creative player to assist. You know, now in world football, the accounting assist. And time is not on our part. And to time is not you know, on our part to do that. I think uh, if we can have a good like the days of JJ, my days and rumors, you know, creative somebody who can change, change the concept of a game, who can make a difference in the game. That's what we're really lacking, that can stab authority and become a leader and do something and make something happen in the middle of the park. I think that's what we're really lacking. If we can have that creativity in the middle of the park, and then the two top, the guy supporting Igalo, if it's an actual that's going to be supporting Igalo, if they're going to bring the other Moses, the two Moses to be supporting, which I really prefer, Moses on the right, the other Moses on the left, and because the NHL is not really giving Igalo that support that I'm expecting. Uh, but Igalo, you know, Igalo's striking pattern is very, very, he's just a striker who, if he has a chance, he can finish, but he cannot create that chance himself and, and take on one or two defenders and do the finishing. So I think he need that creativity from the middle field that can supply him the, the supply line has to be there for him to really yeah, deliver. To uh, you know, Mikel has played World Cup before. I think that my, my focus should be in the young lads who hasn't played World Cup. That will really galvanize them to show it because it's a pinnacle, it's what all footballers dream of to play in the World Cup. So if you have opportunity to play, you should grab it with both hands. It helps us a lot because, I mean, the age is on our side, the pace is on our side. I mean, experience-wise, we might not have it because it's only Mosa, Mosa, Mikel, Onaze, and about four of them that has played World Cup proper. So I think in the World Cup, is a different ball game. You have to play your best in the world. All the countries coming to World Cup will bring their best players. So I think we should have in hand to get all our best we can to go to the world. Talking about experience, Yama issue came to my mind now in the goalkeeping yes. side. I mean, goalkeepers are always best, like old wine, they age, and they are, they are, the, they are the, a goalkeeper can play till 40 years old. Uh, but the other argument I'm having, you don't have to bring him in now because, you know, we are not right professionally to accept that. It might cause, cause a rift in the team, yes. it might cause uh, disagreement in the team. So it might cost a lot of, it might not make the people that works to qualify us for the World Cup really shows the intensity and the, to galvanize to play. And as we call it, the bad might comes in. Uh, in a way, but not really as back in our days. In a way, there is still, it might still, the older players will still want to stand up. Uh, my own days, it was, it was just that you have to belong to belong. If you don't belong, they will do everything to kick you out. So that was it back in our days. But now, I think the older players still have to come on and then make things happen in the camp and make things uh, work for the national team. I think if we go with this squad, we have to be prepared because it's going to be a big surprise. So we losing against Serbia will let us learn a big lesson okay. to see what we can, the depth of the squad, what we can fit in to really make it work. But by and large, I think the boys are determined to make it.
Uh, the first game is always very, very crucial. Our first game will really determine how far. Thank God we are playing Argentina the last game. So our first game is very, very crucial. I wish the young guys, because they have something to prove, I really hope they can, they can, they can go further. They can go to the quarterfinals. If, if, if God of Soccer is in Africa, we can go to semifinals. And then, because I can see the determination, even from the qualifying, I can see the determination in them trying to prove a point. So if they can take that galvanizer to the World Cup, I think it will really help us a lot. No, I scout and as you can see, I stay with my family. I mind my business. I don't really, because I mean the terrain in football circle, and you see, I even have a club side in my state, which I'm not even involved. I even brought a proposal to package them with Atletico Madrid of Spain, which it didn't work out. I don't think what I'm going to do again. So it's just time will tell, though, because, I mean, with my experience in Europe and with the club, with my teammates I have in Europe, who is scattered all over Europe now, being director of football in Atletico Madrid, director of football in Anderlecht and all that. Uh, even Mike Emelano, director of football in uh, Chelsea before he went to Monaco. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we should have a platform to create for ex Everybody shouldn't be coach, coaches. You shouldn't be coaches. Uh, ex there's a platform for you to be a scout, uh, director of football, as I said, and even a coordinator. You know, understand me? And just contribute your own quota and experience to, to the upbringing of the grassroots football, even in, in your country, can be in your state. So I'm just doing my scouting business and surviving on that. I've, I've, I've been scouting around, I've been scouting around, giving the unprivileged players opportunity. I've been, I've been consulting, I've been recommending them. Now that they're going to start under 17, maybe I'll recommend one or two of them to whoever is going to handle under 17. I know it might be one of my colleagues or one of my teammates or one of my friends, definitely. It will fall into that category. So you recommend them and see if they can tap their talent from there. Uh, I didn't have, FIFA didn't ban me. It was all the cartel, as you said. It was all Keshi, late Keshi and uh, West Tower and all that. that day. Because then Okocha was coming up, you know, so they just, they had somebody coming up to replace me. So my issue wasn't even when Abiola was trying to assist and Aikomo, all the top brass. Babangida, they wanted to step in to make sure I played World Cup. But you know, that 93 was election period too, and then they had their own political problem and I had my own drama in Belgium. So I'm not, I regret not playing World Cup, but I forgot to keep me alive today. You know, I've lost a lot of friends that have played the World Cup, like five of them, from Wilfred to Keshi to Yekini to Thompson, Olea, then Uche, Uche Okafor. So when you've seen all this drama in life, you just thank God. Maybe God slowed you down to be alive today, to talk to you, to have this conversation with you. Because, uh, if you have all that glory and it all goes in vain, what will you do? You will thank God for keeping you alive now. So I cherish my life and I thank my God for keeping me alive. It doesn't, because it was my era, 86, 87, 85. That was my era. And, uh, you know, Enes Okonkwo nicknamed all the great, Odek Bami has his own, Owoblo. He nicknamed everybody. So my own era just fell into Maradona era. So that was why I was nicknamed Maradona. Yeah, I do cycling once in a while. Uh, if I have a son now. I have part time I have now just to take him and take a walk around the estate here and walk with him and try to encourage him to play football, which he is not. Hopefully for Nigeria. He's not interested yet, but one day he will tell he will be interested. <laughs> Uh, you know, we Nigerian, we are not patient when we lose. I mean, this is a game of football. We have to be patient with the Eagles. I mean, look at the reaction after losing to Serbia. It's only people like us that play football know that this is just a friendly match that you need to lose like this to learn a lesson, to pick a point from it and move forward. Uh, but I just hope Nigeria will be patient and try to support Super Eagles come Russia in June to see if we can get to quarterfinal or semifinal.